I'm so excited every week. Like, let's be real. I absolutely love face painting and talking to people about face painting. It doesn't get better than that. We can't tell. <laughs> well, and welcome everybody that is new that this is their first time in one of our classes. That's super fun. I'm excited to have everybody here. Um, obviously, it's not super useful to go over the rules until everybody's here, but um, oh, yay, Selena, first timer. How exciting. Um, Okay, so uh, just to go over for people who don't know, um, you are welcome to speak up during class, but we will, the class will run for two hours, and then we will have um, like a Q&A at the end, where if there's something you want to know, it can be a part of the class or just something else that you've really been wanting to ask, um, then we'll have time for that at the end. But if there's something that is specific to what we're doing right now, um, like if I'm painting along and I'm totally covering the design, which will happen at least once, um, just speak up and be like, can't see it. And then, you know, we can adjust and whatever. Um, and then the chat, um, column, that is a great place for you guys to talk to each other, um, or to ask questions, but I don't usually go through the chats during the class, but I do go through and I read them afterwards. So if there is a question, but you don't want to have everybody, um, ask, or, or spend time in the class going over it, but you don't want to forget it either. Go ahead and put it there. And then um, this class, because we opened it to visitors, um, I'm going to go ahead and open the entire class to visitors. So what usually happens is we'll do this awesome live experience and it is being recorded. Um, and then what I will do is I'll go through and I will um, do a very soft edit uh, just to take out the very beginning and the end um, and put it up on YouTube. And then, um, I will just send out an email or because it's on YouTube, um, people will know, and then you can rewatch the class. So if it's something that like poor Diane today <laughs> has to skip out halfway through, she doesn't have to feel like, oh my gosh, I'm missing it. Um, and so if there are any of the previous classes that you might be interested in watching, um, there's a list on buy me a coffee and you can go through and you can purchase classes one at a time. Or if you decide that you want to be a supporting member of Fairy Fox Design, all you have to do, the cost is $20 per month, and then you come to as many of the live classes as you want, but you also get all of the recorded classes um, included in that for as long as you want to be a part of it. So um, class may be a little bit different for our first timers. I am so happy that we have so many of you here. Um, we focus a lot on the... Um, the thinking part of face painting. Uh, and so I explain a lot of how I think and we explore um, how you guys think and we put designs together in a really thoughtful way. So I hope that you get a couple designs that you're really excited to try, but I hope even more that you get from this um, how to not be afraid of face painting, how to not be afraid if somebody comes up to you and is like, hey, I want this. You can be like, ooh, yes, let's do it, you know, or whatever, instead of it feeling very um, intense. So we are now five minutes in. I um, will do my best to stay um, up to date with anybody's questions or people trying to come in, uh, but let's go ahead and get started. So um, the topic for today that we are talking about that, of course, I love because I love everything, um, is giving designs a voice. And this is something that, you know, when you first start face painting, it's all you can do to get the butterfly down. <laughs> and I totally understand that. But I found that as I was going through and I was painting butterfly after butterfly after butterfly, I, um, oh, we have one person that can't hear. Um, your computer might be muted. That's a problem. I'm so glad you're here. Um, can everybody else hear me okay? Are we doing all right? Okay, because my computer said that it was struggling with audio, but I tried to reboot that already. Um, okay. I'm so sorry. I hope we can figure, you, that you can figure this out, but uh, I'm not sure what to tell you. Okay, um, we'll keep going. If anybody has thoughts um, for her, go ahead and give her ideas in the comments. But okay, so when we look at giving um, designs a voice, what it is is because as you get used to it and you're like, okay, I know how to do a butterfly, um, 
we can still explore and expand different colors, different sizes, different methods. There's always room to change. And I love that about face painting. But I found that I wanted my designs to do more. And so if you imagine a little person um, that never talked, never communicated at all, um, they would be a very sad little person. Uh, communication is a huge part um, of what life is all about. We love communicating. And so finding a way for our designs to communicate can be amazing. It can, whatever emotion it is you're trying to capture, um, it can amplify it, the success of the design. And so um, today in this class, we have eight different methods of giving designs a voice. So the first one, uh, well, actually, I'm not even including this one, but the easiest one, obviously, is the cool designs that use the mouth as the mouth of the critter. And so if you have a dinosaur that's talking, and that's kind of like giving the design a voice, but this is something where we want, when people see our design, we want them to know what the design is trying to say. We want to be able to say, not only is this a butterfly, but that's a butterfly with attitude. Can you imagine how much fun it would be to paint a butterfly with attitude? So um, absolutely, everybody is going to have their own messages they're trying to share. I know um, there are certain events that are very message centric. So doing a Relay for Life, um, doing one of the walks can be a really big deal because that is such a special message of, you know, celebrating the victories over cancer and um, giving hope to people that are currently battling cancer and then them remembering people who have passed away. One of the um, easiest examples of giving a design a voice is when anybody asks for a memorial painting um, and they want you to, you know, commemorate um, somebody that they've lost. So there are times when people will specifically ask for a message. And um, these designs can be used in those situations, uh, but they can also be used if you want to give the design a voice on your own initiative, which of course is my favorite thing to do. And so you have a kid and they ask for something, it doesn't matter what it is, uh, maybe they ask for an elephant, and in your head, you're just like, he, 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 I'm going to make a talking elephant because how much fun would that be? So um, with no further ado, we're going to get started. Um, okay, so. I thought instead of doing full face designs today, we would focus on arm designs because I know we're all trying to get used to painting on arms. And um, I also know that there isn't as much out there. And so these techniques can be easily converted into designs on the face as well. Um, this isn't something where it's like, I need you to see the face to understand what I'm talking about. So I thought that this would be a perfect time because you know me, I love to layer. So we're going to layer some arm training into um, the voice training. Okay, so for the first one, um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen real quick, or not my screen, but my camera. Okay. Awesome. Almost finished here. I think it's funny whenever I go to a Zoom meeting and there's all this dead space. I always was like, what's that for anyway? And um, now I'm like, oh, I know. They're trying to figure out what the heck is going on. Okay. <laughs> so here we go. The very first one that I want to go over today is um, banners. So banners are such a fun way to share a message. Um, and I think there's probably only one N in banners. Maybe there are two. I don't know. No, that's good. There are two? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> My uh, high school English teacher would laugh at me a lot because, um, yeah, I struggle. But, okay. So, here we have very pretty little banners. Okay. So, let's talk about what is the use of a banner. Um, remember that in face painting, we're always focused on boundaries. So what is on the inside and what is on the outside? And a banner gives us a place for our message. And so I'm going to go through and I could paint this, but it might be, well, yeah, let's paint it because um, we'll uh, actually, I'll just show you the outline so we can go faster through this, but then we'll actually paint one here in just a second. Okay. So a banner is typically a rectangle shape. And that's fine. Um, you can get, you know, banners that we use for face painting and we tie the little corners. And so you can have this kind of banner, which is fine, but it gives you a place to write whatever it is you're trying to say. Um, but it's so much more fun to add a little bit of a wiggle to it. So let me show you how that looks. 
Um, I like to do it differently when I'm drawing than when I'm painting. So I'm gonna show you the way I paint it. So it might look a little strange, but okay. So first you're gonna go through and you're gonna give it a little bit of a wave. The reason that we give it that wave is because um, things that stay still aren't nearly as interesting as things that move. And so now it's moving a little bit and we like it better. Now we're going to bring this part back and out. And then you can make a banner that is folding behind or folding in front. You can do it. Anyway, so if you just do a simple, you know, Pinterest search or whatever for banner designs, you'll come up with so many. But I just want to show you how easy it is to get them. So we have a little candy cane here and a little candy cane there um, flipped over. Now, all we have to do is we draw that line right there. And then we draw this line right here. And then we bring this side out and then you can do a squiggly line you can do a straight line um, you can also make it look like a little ribbon um, and then we just bring this line out right here okay so there is a very simple typical banner um, this these two little triangles are going to be the opposite side of the banner so if you're or the ribbon so if you want you can give them a little bit of a texture um, or even just shading that you know further emphasizes the difference between that back and the front. It also looks nice. Um, you can give it a little, you know, a few little lines to show the shadow that is being cast by it being forward and back. But you can see they're not really hard. Um, it's nice to be able to spend a little bit of time with them um, before you go out and try and put it onto a kid. Uh, but finding your favorite ones is really going to be nice. Now, if you wanted to make it look like it was folding forward, um, what we do with that is you bring your rectangle like this, and then we can, well, here, I'll just show you the way that I would usually draw it instead. It's, it's really fun to play with this. So if you just draw a squiggly line, like this. Then you draw the exact same squiggly line or close enough, right? Um, and then this one is going to go behind. So we have right there. And then we're just connecting the tops to the bottoms. And they can kind of fold out and they can kind of fold down. And um, there you go. So we can have them bump forward and we can have them bump back. Now you can see that right here, we need to have this one go back a little bit. So you can see we see the inside and the back. Anyway, it, it gets really fun and really confusing uh, pretty quick, but this is an awesome way to give a voice because now we have right here to say in memory of, or it's a boy, you know, if um, you're at a baby shower and you're painting everybody's little face and you wanna be able to throw that message out there, that's really fun. So let's um, go ahead and add a banner now. And I'm gonna pretend like this is this part of the arm because that's my favorite place to paint. So I'm just gonna make it sideways. Um, you realize that we're not going to do this to the kid, right? We're not gonna turn them up on their side, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and we are gonna do a banner design here. Okay, so one of the funnest parts of a banner is the fact that it is, um, you add ribbons to special things. And so we do that to, um, you'll see it in tattoo work a lot, but we will add a banner or a ribbon to like a gift or around a bouquet of flowers or, you know, tied in somebody's hair. Um, that would be really cute. If you had a bow up in the little person's hair and then you had a, a ribbon coming off of that. Um, that would be awesome. Okay, but so instead of having to conceptualize all of that in your head, um, we can just do it now here with our flat brush. And so we start and we'll just do a nice arc this time. Um, we start right there. Okay, now we have the front part, but we need it to come back behind and down. So then we can just go right over here and there we have it scooping forward. And then let's do this one scooping behind. And it really, um, just like everything we face paint, we're going to be outlining, we're going to be adding that definition. Um, and so I like to do the final stroke of whatever is in front. So right here, this is in front. So I wanna have that be the final stroke. 
and here this is in front so i want to have that be the final stroke and that gives me a little bit of um a leg up when i'm working on the lines which we'll do here in a little bit okay so now we have this fun banner and i like to add the banner first before i add anything else because it gives me the chance to keep my design really really clean and um, I love having clean designs, uh, but you don't have to always have the background stay in the back. You can have stuff hanging over the sign. You can add other fancy things. Um, and so we're going to add a little bit more now that we have that base down so that it's going to stay in the right place for us. Um, and so I'm just going to grab some pink. And I'm just gonna do some flowers really quick um, because they are so fun and they look so good with banners. And so we can come right here and we can be like, okay, so behind the banner right here, we're gonna have a flower. And um, behind the banner over here, we're gonna have a flower. And then let's maybe put a couple little buds over here. We'll put a bud down here. And this is where we're just decorating. You know, we don't have to really think through super hard any of these choices, um, but it's just gonna make it nice for us. Um, then I'm gonna switch to a flat brush, um, a half inch flat, and I'm gonna go ahead and put in a bunch of leaves. Um, so I'm grabbing just some green. And um, for you first timers, I use a lot of tag. Um, you're always welcome to ask products, but getting just the specific product is not uh, my favorite thing to focus on in face painting. So if you have product questions, I'm happy to answer them, but I tend to not say exactly what I'm using with every single stroke. Um, I'm sorry if that's hard for you because I don't want things to be hard for you. Okay, so you can see that we're just tucking in leaves um, wherever. We don't have to just do leaves where there are flowers. We can do leaves all by themselves. Um, and then, like I said, we can go in front of the banner if we want to um, and add that element of um, interaction there. Okay, so the message. Um, this is a really funny one, okay? So this is one um, that you have to know the group, like you have to read in, and you could do this as um, a joke with the person that you're painting with or painting on. You can be like, hey, I wanna do something that's gonna be really funny. Your friends are gonna think it's hilarious. Um, or you can talk to one of the friends if you're super brave. Um, I don't know this as much, but you can talk to one of the friends and be like, hey, I wanna kind of make this funny do you think your friend would enjoy this joke? And then it can be a surprise for them. Um, but that's totally, um, if that works for them. Okay, so now remember, straight lines are not as interesting as lines that have a little bit of movement. So we have this ribbon that's bending this way, but they can also bend and curl in the other way. And so one of the things that I'll often do um, just because it's interesting is I'll give my banners a little bit of a wiggle instead of a perfectly straight line. Uh, because I, I think that that's beautiful. So then we come here and we curve in and out and meet that. So there's our little candy cane shape. Um, and then we just come and we just go across the top. Now you can see we've got a little bit of white here and that's a good thing because we wanna put that little line and give it a back. And then we have a little bit of white up above that line and that's a bad thing because this black is the outline of our banner and we don't wanna have banner outside of our outline. So we can just thicken that line a little bit to keep it nice and clean. And then we can come down, do the line over the bottom. And then we need our candy cane right there on that side, since this is going in front. Um, and then that will just bend down here and bend behind there. And you can just kind of watch it and see, are there areas that are looking like they need a little bit of help or is it looking good, you know, and just kind of go with it. Um, when I was drawing the banner, I added a lot of like texture and detail, which can be hard to do with a paintbrush without it ending up a little bit muddy. So if you take just a damp brush, you don't really want a lot of paint on there, um, and you just pull, um, you can just add that shadow right there. Um, 
by just smearing in some of that color. And that is a much easier way to do that than trying to draw a whole bunch of little tiny lines. Um, that would be kind of miserable. Okay, so then we have the end there. Okay, so here is what we wanna do. This is gonna be so much fun. So I'm gonna just, um, and then this is a stylistic choice. Um, I like to do my lettering just a little bit off of the banner. Um, and so I might go off of it a little bit here and there. I think it's fun because the rules are meant to be broken. But um, obviously, if you want to stay on the banner, that makes so much sense. But okay, so we're going to come up. We're going to go back and forward. And we're just making a nice little treble clef right here. Okay, so we have a treble clef. And that is one of the other things we'll be talking about a little bit. So I'll go more into um, why I have the treble clef in a little bit. Um, but uh, it is a very useful little symbol to learn how to paint. So, okay. So then right here, we call me. And then right here, um, we are going to write, and I'm going to also talk a little bit more about lettering in a little bit. So if you're like, but I can't letter, I'll help you with that. Don't worry. And then we're going to put maybe. And I'm just kind of going quick here so we can move on. But um, I don't know if you guys like that song. It's not really popular right at this current moment, but I sure thought it was funny when everybody would sing it. Um, and then you can put, um, you can put a real phone number or you can just put in, you know, some random one. This is a random one. So don't call it because the person who answers is going to be like, what? My phone number is on YouTube. So we'll just, there we go. Okay. Um, but anyway, how funny at an event to have somebody walking around with their phone number <laughs> and an invitation to call them. Um, this would probably be better at a private party than it would, you know, at a public event. But I think of those groups of um, young adults and just how up they are for anything and how silly they all are and what a fun thing it is. So um, once you have your message down, then of course we go into the final stage of a design and that's just where we have fun making it look amazing. So we can go in and just add some teardrops to our little buds uh, because this isn't a flower design. That's not where I want the focus to be. Um, I don't really want to handcraft these flowers to be the most beautiful you've ever seen. Um, but you can, of course, if that's something that you're totally in love with and you've got the time, you can make, you can make whatever design, design decision you want to. Um, but here we go. And then, um, just like we added that treble clef, it's really nice to um, put in any extra details that are going to help you sell your message. So the treble clef is there to help us know that this is music. Um, but of course, we can add a couple more little details that um, are fun. As we know in floral arranging, we always have those little extra. So we can just come on here and throw in. So this is just like a bent teardrop kind of, or just you can do it in two pieces if you want. So you get a little ball with a stem and then you can just add in a few little um, music notes. And that can just further sell the message that this is a song and we want that. And then of course, um, we could be done here, uh, but why be done when you could paint more, right? Um, you can also on a banner design, um, you really are trying to contain something. You're containing a message inside, but then you're also usually wrapping around something, whether it's a building or flowers or whatever. So you can come and you can add, you know, line work to fill in any of the empty spaces that you see um, that really makes the banner pop out if there's a lot of things behind the banner um, that we can see are and the line work can go in front of the banner too if we want that um, but anyway okay so here is our first design with a voice. Um, you can see it has a call to action. It's telling people to do something. That's really fun to do um, if you're 
painting somewhere and it's like voters weekend or whatever. And if you have strong feelings about voting, you know, you could paint this up on your own arm, like go vote today, you know, or whatever. It's really fun to tell people what to do. Um, and so to be able to have a design that's telling people what to do is awesome. And our first look at how to do that is right here with a banner. So there's our first one. Okay. Any questions about banners before we hop on to our next one? Okay. So up next, second way, number two, how do we give designs a voice? So number one was banners. Number two is um, a similar technique. And so we can go through this part quickly, but it is using flags. Now the difference between a banner and a flag a banner is used to send a message. Um, there's text involved. There's, this is what we're trying to say. And there's, it's often a lot of words. Um, a flag uses simple color and um, things to communicate that message. Um, you can have a voice, you know, the perfect example is the quarantine flag, you know, um, or a pirate flag or whatever. A flag can be used to send a very clear message. Um, by use of color, um, simple shapes, and flags are usually something that we want to be able to recognize um, and to be able to recognize from far away. So for those of us living in the United States, we were blessed with the world's, well, no, Mexico. Mexico is. <laughs> But it's a complicated flag, like getting all those stripes to be straight and to remember how many and then 50 stars. And like when you're doing it on a little kid and they want it this big and you're like, OK, I have this big of a square. How do I fit 50 stars? So we want to be able to recognize it. So using the, the appropriate colors can be important, but also know that we need to keep it realistic for us. Um, anyway, so let me show you really quickly a fun design. Oh, first, um, let me show you the types of flags. So if we are princess castling it, um, we can use some of those same curvy lines um, and then curvy line that eventually lead to a point. Um, and if you want a little hack on how to make that easier for you, um, just draw a dot of where you're trying to go. And then from here, you just curvy line down, from here, curvy line up. Um, and then we don't have to draw the lines like we did the last time all the way you can even just add a couple of them um, to add that depth and body um, to the flag look. But so we can have um, a wavy flag like that. Of course, we can do flags that are rectangles. Um, flags don't have to fly up. If you think of the male, um, like a train picking up the mail, I think that their little mail flag hung down like this, um, or maybe that's just the bag of mail that somebody would grab, I'm not really sure. But anyway, so don't feel boxed in to what flags usually are. Um, there's a lot of room to play, but just remember that if you're trying to go for something recognizable, keep it recognizable. Um, but if you're looking to be creative, um, how much fun would it be um, if you were doing a cool flag to have like, that little flag that's a heart shape and then you can have it be whatever are the right colors or whatever. So there is still room for creativity. Don't make this recognize word scare you. Okay, so time for a design with a flag. Now, I don't know about you guys, but um, when I am on the job, I end up painting like one unicorn for every other thing I paint. <laughs> So now that there's not as much work going around, I am in total unicorn withdrawal. So we are going to do a unicorn design here real quick. And I know most of you have probably watched me paint a unicorn before, but here we go. Okay, so we're gonna just get a base in there. And I love doing my unicorn bases with powder because I like the depth that it adds to have it be faint. Um, so I've got a pear shape here, uh, or a peanut. I've got a small circle and a large circle. Off of that large circle, I bring one ear, I scoop it down, and then I have um, the horn that kind of comes out somewhere. 
Um, I change it up all the time, so we'll just stick it right there. Um, and then the ear line also comes down for the neck, and it's a little bit of an S, so there's a little bit of a bend down on this side going back. But okay, so there's our basic, had to blow it, sorry. Okay, so there's our basic unicorn shape. And then we are going to, now flags, remember, they come in all shapes or not shapes, but sizes. And so we can have a tiny little baby flag that is so cute and a little kid's waving it in a parade, or we can have a giant flag that, you know, is over a gas station or something that is like, if you brought it down onto the ground, it'd be enormous. Okay, now this is what we see most often when we do animals. It's almost always little cheek art, you know, it's just the little head, the little profile. And I'm gonna see today if I can help you guys feel a little more comfortable um, adding just a little bit of extra. So I'm going to add just a ball right here. It's really not too scary right underneath that arm. And what that is, is that's this unicorn's hand from behind holding like this. So we have somewhere to put the flag. Okay, so I live in Kansas, um, which is where KU is. And so we are going to pretend like this unicorn. Okay, so the reason that we are doing um, a sports theme with a unicorn is because there's so many times that a little girl comes up and she wants a unicorn and you take a look and there's mom and dad and everybody's wearing sports memorabilia. It can be any team, it can be whatever, but you can tell that this family is um, their major fans. And so sneaking a little bit of fandom into your design when it wasn't requested is one of the funnest ways um, to engage and excite everybody. Um, okay, so now um, hair grows from somewhere and it goes to somewhere. So this is, I don't usually do this, but I'm just showing you. This is the line of where the hair is going to come from. And so one of the mistakes that we often can make is we just bring hair down. But just like in people, hair can grow up, it can be styled, um, and so we can have the freedom to know that this is where we're coming from and then we can go wherever we want. So I usually think about a mermaid when I paint my unicorn hair, but I'm just gonna come up and I'm just gonna swoop down, just right there, and then I'm gonna do the opposite so that I get both sides of that beautiful um, color there. And then I'm going to not have my hair come out quite as far because I'm going to have a flag here this time. So then from behind the ear, I'm going to bring some hair forward, flip my brush, bring hair forward again, flip my brush one more time, and bring my hair down. Okay, so that's kind of basic um, unicorn look. I don't really like how much space there is over here without hair, so I'm going to bring just a little curl right there. Okay, so here you can see the girl's happy. She's got her fun little um, unicorn design and pink is her favorite color and that's all awesome. Um, but then I'm gonna just bring in this blue and I won't finish it until the very end because I feel like in a design, like in a story, you have the beginning and you have the end where everybody's paying attention. And then the middle, people kind of quit paying attention. And so I don't want to put my awesome parts, my awesome little bits, in the middle um, because I want to kind of save there to be a little bit of a surprise at the end. So I want to make sure that I leave plenty of space in between um, her mouth and the flag or it will look like she's kissing it and I don't really want her to be that big of a fan. Um, but then I'm going to just bring like a little pendant kind of flag. I'm not going to put any wiggle in it. I just want it to be this nice little triangle. And people watching will have this question in their head of like, what the heck is that little triangle? And that's fine. Um, let them be curious. But I won't even connect that to this little ball here until a little ways in. Okay, now my story has changed. I'm not just painting the story of a unicorn. I'm painting the story of a unicorn holding a flag and holding a KU flag nonetheless. And so I want her hair that would normally be outlined in black and I would focus on the unicorn, I'm trying to extend my story just a little bit. So I'm going to bring white as my outlining color for the hair. And when you outline hair in white, um, it's going to pick up a little bit of the underneath color and that's fine. Um, but I don't like to do a direct outline. 
So I kind of come in and out and I'll be on the inside of that outline and then the outside and then I'll have some pieces of little curly hair that kind of go off into nowhere. And so I like to think of this more as like white highlights than like hair highlights, not the way we usually highlight with white, um, than I do thinking of it as a straight outline. So I like to do thick, chunky parts of white and then thin, wispy parts. And we just wanna kind of accent whatever shape we have overall created. So this one kind of comes in, so we kind of come in. This one is gonna come down and out because that's kind of what we do. But we can also pull a little bit um, off um, to create just different interesting spaces. Hair is not all one shape or size. So there we have all of this awesome white. Now this is probably a good time since we've got our white to sneak in um, a little flagpole right there. Um, but again, I'm not gonna finish that flag until later. So I'm gonna put my white down and I'm gonna focus on our little unicorn real quick and put some outlines onto her. Okay, so up here on this top ear, we're going to just put a nice little triangle shape and then kind of put that inner line. And what that inner line says is it's that the ear is pointing forward, which means that this unicorn is interested in what's going on. And then we of course need a little horn. And so I just do a straight line um, coming up and then just a little getting bigger of bumps kind of going down. Um, now, typically that horn would actually be in the hair instead of on the end, but it takes a lot of time to create hair that isn't blocking the horn and the horns, are, you know, and I just don't find that I need to be that careful. So I just kind of stick it out over there. Um, but then for this line, we're going to do just another cute little S. And then um, I usually like to bump just a little bit right there to give a little nostril. And then I curl in and smile and add a second little nostril right there. And then from the tip of the mouth, I scoot back just a little and I come down and then we always want there to be a jaw and a neck. You need a neck on unicorns, they have them. So there we go. Now we just need this little eye. And typically um, I do the eye thin to thick to thin and you know all of that. Um, but this time I want her to be looking at this flag. And so, I am going to shift the way I paint my eyes. So let me show you how I do that. Um, you can do it in a few different ways, but this is the way that I do it. So I'm going to do a teardrop that is bent just a little bit right there. And then I'm going to do this really thin oval right there. And the bottom half gets filled in right there. And then we do a little cup. And that makes it look like she has a cheek. You can see we've kind of created a circle. So we have a, the bottom of the circle and the top of the circle. And if you've got the time and the inclination, you can even grab a very damp pink, not damp, um, dry, a very dry pink. And you can come in here and just add a little rosy cheek um, right there. Try not to get the black, um, but that can be kind of a fun way to make her young. Or you can add freckles. Um, a few little freckles, especially if the little girl has freckles is an awesome way to make that fun. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, um, and you can add the eyebrow if you want, and you can even tuck in a couple little eyelashes if you want, but we're not trying to make this complicated. We wanna keep it simple. So we want to create a hand. Now, hands are hard, and we are going to go over hands a lot today. So we'll get there, but horse hands are easy. They just have a hoof. So all we have to do is we need to show that there is a hoof here. So there you go, there's a hoof. And then we need to show that it's bent back on itself like this so that there's somewhere for that handle to be. And so this is just like our banner skills that we just learned. We just go right around. And then um, you can give her a little fingernail hoof bit if you want. Um, and of course, we want to have that arm come back towards her um, a little bit like that. So now she's just hanging on to it. You can paint her fingernail if you want to, um, or you can just make it wider um, than her leg. And that just, again, am amplifies that this is different. This isn't just, you know, a leg. 
Um, but really, when you're painting the bodies of animals, focusing on the idea that this is like a stuffed animal, um, and this is the leg of a stuffed animal, makes it so much easier than trying to get like anatomically correct horse. Uh, I don't have those skills, and I don't really want those skills, because I don't know how many little kids want an anatomically correct horse on them. But okay, so now we are here. We can tell that she's holding a little flag, and she's happy, and she's cute. Um, and the flag is not as important as she is, so I'm only going to outline half of it, and then I'm going to underline the bottom half of the flag, but I'm going to leave the top half unoutlined, and that's just going to help me keep my focus where my focus needs to be, and then, of course, um, you know, we're waiting for the big reveal. People are like, why is that unicorn holding a flag? Um, because I haven't put in all the KU colors, I only have blue, um, they might not figure it out, or they may have figured it out. It depends on how smart the people watching are. But of course, this design um, has a lot of space that we haven't used, but because of our line work in the hair, we don't really want to add line work other places, and so we can just add magic. Um, and we just go magic, 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 um, magic up here maybe. Be careful when you're adding magic around the nose, it can look like a sneeze. Um, and I have done that more than once, and every time I'm like, oh, bless you, unicorn, you're sneezing again. But okay, so now we have some magic around, and the design feels more complete. And then this is where I go in for the big chuckle. Um, and bless universities for having two logos. I don't know if you've noticed this, but there's the hard logo, which for um, the University of Kansas is the Jayhawk, but then they have the easy one, which is just the letters. And so you want to practice so that you can do them, you know, from memory, but we just have um, the K and then the U, and then with this K part just comes down there. And now all of a sudden, oh, it's a University of Kansas unicorn and everybody's laughing and giggling and the kid will enjoy that attention that they'll get all day long, um, especially if it's a game day and they're going around the city. But anyway, okay, so flags are huge. You can see that without this, yeah, it's a unicorn, but with this, the unicorn now has a message. And I love that we've given this unicorn a voice and it's so much fun. Okay, awesome. So that's number two. Um, for number three, okay, this one, oh, we gotta go real quick. I'm gonna get a drink. All right. So what if we don't wanna actually write it out? Um, or we do want to write it out, but we don't want it to be like a printed message. What if we want it to be a verbal message? How do we get a verbal message? Well, in comics, they've answered that for us. So our third way of giving a voice is through speech and thought bubbles. And um, this is a lot like texting. So you can even do text bubbles. If you want to have like a conversation on an arm, that would be such a fun thing to do. But just like people when they're texting, um, we can learn some of the skills of being lazy. And so we can add emojis. We can add, and I'm not meaning like painting complicated ones. I mean, things as simple as smiley faces and whatever to get our thought across um, because painting letters, especially when they're little is really hard. And so, um, we want to make sure that whatever we decide to say, we say it really simply. Um, I was just watching a movie last night and they were like, we need to send a message. And he's like, send help wanted urgently. And they're like, well, if you're asking for help, people will know it's urgent. And then they're like, well, we don't even need wanted because obviously if we say help, we're wanting it. And so they were able to, you know, shrink that message down. So anytime we're going to use a thought bubble or a speech bubble, we want to shrink the message down. And then writing the message first. So like, hey, I love you. Okay, say so that's our message. Write it first and then add the bubble around it. And that is going to help make sure that the bubble is the perfect size. If we draw the bubble first and we make the bubble too big, or what's even worse, if we make the bubble too strong and then we get going, all we got was, hey, I love. And that's a cute message, but we just missed 
the most important part of that, which is you. I love you, right? So having that um, is important. Now, powder is an awesome way to do speech and thought bubbles because you can immediately paint on top of it. Your black isn't going to get diluted or whatever color you're doing it with. And then if you don't um, get exactly the right size or whatever, it doesn't really matter because it's not as stark of a color. But okay, so speech bubbles, they can be different shapes. Don't feel stuck into these circles, but we usually have that little V. Um, and then we usually have no corners because it is a bubble. And so it can be a square bubble, it can be a triangle bubble, it can be, you know, one of these kind of things, you know, if you're going to try and work around a design, you can make it whatever shape you want, but those are just some thoughts. Then with thought bubbles, um, we usually have getting bigger little clouds until you get to the actual thought. Um, and then you can make these as big or as small or whatever, but this little V is going to say, this is being said out loud. And these little things are going to signify that we're thinking this. Um, and this can be a really fun thing to do in a group. So if you have whatever little design um, and there are three or four friends, um, you can add a thought that this little creature is you know flirting or whatever you want with somebody else in the group and that can be just super fun okay so i'm going to show you guys and again i'm cheating today because we're on arms making it easy for me um but i'm going to show you a really fun um, little character that i've used so happily i was going to say so often and sadly i don't get to use her nearly as often as i want to um, but I'm going to show you her cause she's super cute. So we're going to go ahead and just give us our thought bubble speech bubble thing. So there we go. That's kind of the space that I have for my message. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to just create, and I am using simple shapes. Okay. This doesn't need to be something that is really complicated, but I'm going to give her a little shirt and then I'm going to give her some little socks right there. That looks good. Okay. And then one of the awesome things is when you are drawing on a person, you can use that person's skin tone as part of your drawing. So I'm going to have everything work out to where stuff is where I want it to be, but um, she needs some hair. So we're going to give her some hair, some Princess Leia hair right there. Love it. Okay. Um, and then we need some fun color. So this girl said her favorite color was blue. So we're going to come here and we're going to just do stripes of blue to give her this cute little skirt. Um, and then let's go ahead and do blue shoes. And you guys might be like, oh my gosh, where is she going with this? But we'll get there, I promise. Okay. So then on either side, I'm just doing some little blue clouds. Okay. Awesome. Um, and then let's get our fun little tiny filbert. And we need some red, which we're going to bring in right here. And if you use a speech bubble, I'm going to give you a rule. And I know that rules are made to be broken, like I said, but this is one that I don't like to break. If you use a speech bubble, please have the mouth be open, okay? <laughs> it's so sad because it's like, we don't need the complicated story of trying to share a ventriloquist, you know, like closed mouth, but still talking, but you know, we want to be successful. Okay. So then I'm going to just uh, do some rosy cheeks right here. And then I'm borrowing a little bit from the artist of um, the peanuts comic, Charles Schultz um, with her little design. Okay. Now we have a t-shirt. T-shirts are the perfect place to amplify whatever message you're sending. It's a great place to put a logo like we did on the flag. You can put, um, if there's uh, a team that's a big deal. Um, but even one of my favorite things to do on t-shirts is just a simple heart. Um, I don't like to leave t-shirts plain. It's just such a perfect place to put something. Let's have something there, right? Okay, so then now all we have to do is outline her and add her little message. Um, okay, so I'm going to add her little nose 
which is right here. And this shows that um, her head is completely tilted back. So then we're gonna come around and we're gonna come around. And then she doesn't really have a chin because when you tilt all the way back, your chin ends up somewhere up here and just the lines are too complicated and we don't really need them. They're not that necessary, but we do need the neckline. So we just have the neck that comes down and then we want um, some little arms that are bent up into these pom poms. And then we can have our little t-shirt and we can just, again, I'm making it simple. You can make it more life-like if you want, um, but we're just making this awesome. Okay. Um, now this speech bubble, there's another option that we have that's really kind of fun, which is where you can do your little V part like that, and then you can just capture it like this. Now, nothing else is up here, so we can just assume <laughs> that that is now the division from this is our drawing and this is what we're saying. Um, and that can be a nice way to give yourself room to say whatever you wanna say. So a little pleated skirt, I just am grabbing their little pleats, and then we're grabbing a knee and we're taking it up because she's jumping. So she's got those two little pointy knees and then her leg is bent up here and she's got her little foot. I usually put two little lines on top of a shoe to make it interesting and then we can do a fun little striped sock. So we've got a little foot, two little lines, and her little striped sock. Oh look, we have a vertical stripe and a horizontal stripe. She's so funny. Okay, <laughs> things like that for me. I, I love being able to maintain that this is hand-drawn and hand-drawn things are just special like that. And so I don't really worry about it too much. Um, but okay, this is an interesting thing. So when a person smiles, um, you get like a moon shape, right? You, you have this up and down. But when you look at the way an actual mouth works, the top opens and bends up and then the bottom opens and bends down. And so it ends up being more like an almond shape. Um, so you can do the top line straight across, that works too. But if you bend it down, you're going to end up with somebody that's trying to smile with pulling their top lip down and it looks wrong. So there's a little tidbit, but okay, let's give her some little freckles because that'll be cute. And then we can also give her her little bottom lip. And that just adds a little more interest to her face. Okay, so then for her hair, let's pull it down a little bit and then pull it up from both of these sides. And then we'll just do little swirls to make it easy. And then this part, um, I'm gonna do a star, but you can see that we've already got plenty of black. And so I'm going to actually just grab the white and do her pom-poms with white because that's gonna pull in the white from her clothes better. Um, and seems like there was something else. Oh, I'm gonna add a little belt there. Um, and it just won't get as confused with her hair. Uh, it'll give us that little definition, um, which I like. Okay, awesome. So here she is, if we wanted to show even more that she is in the air and that she is so happy and excited that she's flying, um, we can have a little shadow down here. And it was so fast, but look how much that adds to our design. She is just um, jumping. Okay, so now it's so fun um, to have the voice. I mean, here she is, she is ready to say something. So this can be congratulations or hooray or welcome spring. I mean, whatever you want your message to be, um, you can totally add that. So you can just come in here and add your message. Okay, there we go. And then if you want to top off the thing you can, if you wanna add a little bit more interest, you can even have a little bit of fun with the shape. Um, and that's a little bit of a trick. 
adding a little bit of a shape to it makes it not look, oh, she tried for a circle and it's almost a circle, but it's not perfect. You know, you can be like, ha, oh, look, it's, it's cute. She made it even cuter. Okay, so then of course, from this point, we're ready for sparkles and for glitter and whatever. Um, and so we can come back in here and we can just magic, magic, magic and add that. Okay, so voice number three for our design, adding an actual speech bubble. And you can see this is so much nicer on an arm than it is on the face. It gets a little tricky when you have to have the design here and then the speech bubble up on the forehead or whatever. But I love having little people um, saying really nice things. Um, anyway, okay, so there's option number three. Okay, remember, if you guys have questions or you want to say something, you know, you can stop me, but I'm trying to get you guys as much as I can in our uh, couple hours here together. So let's go on to our next one. Okay, so, so far we've done banner, flag, speech bubble. This is my favorite one. Oh man, we could spend two hours on this one. And this is accessories. We can tell a message just by accessories. So I know that they say don't judge a book by its cover, but I also know that people spend so much time and money trying to create a look or an attitude that works perfectly for them. They're trying to communicate, this is who I am, this is what's important to me. And so we can share our message based on what we include in the design. This can be um, clothing. It can be um, something that they're holding. Uh, we can put, you know, hats, uh, jewelry. Um, really, there's a lot that we can say about what is happening um, just based on those things. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this fun little design. And again, I really hope that you guys feel confident uh, to do more than just the head um, because it really is awesome. So when we look at illustrating, um, most of the time when we're little kids, we draw however stuff looks and like to us, we just do our best and we're happy. And then at some point we decide to try and draw the way things really look. And typically we're not very good. And so then it just spirals out of control from there <laughs> for a lot of us. Um, but so I want to show you that just with really basic shapes, when we're illustrating, we can use some stylistic choices that really can help. So I'm going to do a little teddy bear um, for this. So we need a head and heads on bears, just a circle. And then we do another circle. I just did a YouTube video with a bear. So if you're like, I already know where this is going, uh, don't worry, I'm gonna change it a little bit. So we get, and I'm just gonna do one ear here and I'll show you why in a second. Um, and then I'm gonna put this little bear in a shirt. So pretend there's a little shirt right there. Um, and I'm gonna have one hand right here coming down. And then the other hand is going to be right up, up here and bring that hand coming down. And then this hand is going to come up. This hand is going to stay down here. Okay, awesome. And then the feet, really, it can be so simple. So we're going to have the cutoff right here. So let's give him a nice little round tummy, just like Winnie the Pooh. And then we're just going to draw some sticks coming down here. There's our tummy and some nice little chubby feet. Okay, so really you can see I'm just kind of going for the shape of a teddy bear, but then with our outlining, we'll capture all the essential parts. So let's get him a cute shirt. Teal is such a nice color. So we're gonna just pop this guy in a nice turtleneck because I'm so sad that people don't wear turtlenecks very often. And then let's just first cover his body. So you can see we've got his body covered. Now, we can worry about, okay, now we need a shoulder and a sleeve. And then over here, we need a shoulder and a sleeve. And you can see that just by building the shirt, now it's the right shape, it's the right size. I didn't have to know exactly what the lines of the shirt are because that's gonna come later. Okay, so this little bear is having his birthday. 
And so we want to help send that message. So he's already cute. We really like him, but we want to share the message of a birthday. And so the first thing I'm going to add, which is super easy, I'm just getting my one stroke all loaded up. The first accessory to send this message is going to be a nice little party hat. So a party hat has a very small top and then it gets wider. So it's a cone shape. So I'm going to just round and it's because it's round, it's going to go down. So I'm going to just scoop right there. Okay. And you can see that it's almost covering his other ear. I had planned on it covering, um, but this is fine. We'll just add in a little bit of an ear behind that party hat. So let's grab that. And it really is something, um, uh, I had it explained to me that drawing is sculpting in two dimensions. And so just as you imagine somebody sculpting, there's a bunch of stuff that's there that you got to take away. And so, or you're going to add things that aren't there yet. And so that's really what we're doing. Um, so don't feel like if it doesn't look perfect from the beginning, that's totally fine. Okay, now the person that would ask for a teddy bear would probably be turning three. And I like the num drawing the number three, so we're gonna do that. So we have a little ball, comes out, down, and then out, scoop, and around. Putting the number of the age, especially if it's a birthday, is so popular and cute. So now we have a little three on our bear. And um, let's grab another fun color. Okay. And then up here, and I love doing balloons for birthdays um, because they can float. They can go anywhere you have an opening in your design. So we had an opening right over here. So we'll just do that. Now I'm adding the bottom over shifted just a little because I'm going to connect it to this hand. And so if I did the bottom right here, then it would be kind of weird to have the string move. So that's kind of helping right there. And then um, on this last little bit, let's grab some more blue and we'll just draw a nice little square here. And of course, you wouldn't need to do all of these details. Even just one or two of them is going to communicate that message, but it's really kind of fun to do all of them. So. Why not? Okay. And I love changing colors. I know it's nice because it's fast to not change so many colors, but it's fun. I like it. Okay. So here we go. We're going to just do a nice Okay, great little cupcake right there. All right, so now let's put in his eyes. And I want this little guy to be three. And so we need him to have very big eyes to make him look the age that he is. And I even have them like right next together. Okay, now I'm gonna just put in my white and then I'll do my black. Um, actually, let's, let's save the white and do it at the end. Okay. So a bear's nose is kind of the shape of a T. So we can even do that. We can just come in here and draw the letter T. And then we can decide exactly how much of a nose do we want him to have. And that kind of gives us the confidence that we're getting it right and putting it in the right place. So we can get our little inside of the ear and the outside of the ear, making sure it's nice and fluffy. Give him just some little fuzz up on top. Okay, so this is where we get to make him super happy. So we can do some little curved marks. And bring that up. Okay, that looks like a three-year-old. All right, get him his little fuzzy bit there and then come down. Okay. 
nice chubby tummy and over and across. Okay, so for this hand, we are just going to do a U shape and bring it around just like we did on the unicorn. We don't need a whole lot of little details. Um, and so that can just help it stay manageable for us. For this one, we wanna show that this is on his hand. And so we've opened the hand up with that little line and we bring it back and around. You can see that it's just holding that no problem. And then I usually like to cut one leg behind and one leg in front. And don't forget that he's furry. So we can just add that up and around. We can furry him down here, back and around. Okay, he looks so cute. And we can add a belly, but we don't need to. Um, and then we can add just a little bit of shadow here, not a ton. Um, then we've got his nice little party hat here. And we'll go ahead and add a little bit more to that in a minute. So for his eyes, um, we get to choose what he's the most excited about. So is he the most excited about this cupcake? Is he the most excited about the balloon? Or is he most excited about me? Um, because I'm at his party. So if it's me, we can just put the pupils right in the middle. If it's the balloon, we can put the pupils up. But I think he'd be excited about this cupcake. And so we can just bring that pupil down there to kind of show that that's what he's paying attention to. And that one comes over there too. And if you feel like, I feel like obviously that one's bigger than that one. And he's actually looking over here. He's not looking fully down there. So I'll just get rid of those pupils and I will add them on my own here in a second. So then we bring the top part of the white up and over to give that nice little definition there. Um, okay. Oh, and then we've got this little guy up here. Okay. All right, so now for the white. We can do lots of fun things with the white detailing here, of course. We can add some patterns to the party hat, which is really fun. We can add a nice little uh, ta-da up on the top. We can bring in that super irritating little band that goes under the face from that hat if we want to. Um, we can add some more details there, you know, really whatever it is that you want. Um, I wouldn't add all of these. I just am so that you can see what all of your choices are. Um, and maybe some sprinkles to the cupcake. Um, we can add some dots or some flashies around that. Um, okay, now let's make sure we get his pupils in the right place this time. There we go. Now he's down looking at that cupcake and we can do the little highlight on his nose. Um, but you can see that this is just so fun. And if somebody saw this, they would totally know that this little bear, it's his birthday and he's turning three. Like there's such a message that's being conveyed here, even though, so he has a voice, even though we haven't actually explicitly used any words. So this is a super fun design that you can do. You can add shadow and you can go in and have a lot of fun. But I just wanted to show you that the use of multiple pieces of a story can really communicate. And that's why they say a picture is worth a thousand words. It's because in order to tell this little guy's story, you would need a whole lot of words. Um, Anyway, okay, so there is that one. All right, awesome. We are doing so good, I'm having so much fun. Okay, so we've got a few more um, to go over. The next one is really kind of fun. Um, and that is, I wanna tell you guys a little bit about using symbols. Um, this is something that can go in any emotional direction. If we look at the symbols that people connect to and that are meaningful, we have some that are super spiritual and sacred for people. 
we have some that are super funny and we have some that are really offensive. Um, I had a company from China ask if I would um, look at one of their products for them and it came and there was a swastika in you know their stencils and i was like uh yeah that's not gonna fly <laughs> because for them the symbol meant something totally different for me but so it's really important that we are aware of the symbols that we use and how we use them especially um if we're using any that are spiritual or if we're using some that are connected to gender um you want to make sure that what you're doing isn't something that's going to offend whoever else is in the environment. Um, I know I've been asked to do drug paraphernalia before, and um, it's important that you know what those symbols mean, um, especially like tattoo symbols. Um, they're just, there's some pretty deep meaning symbols. So yes, I love using symbols. I wanna show you some that are super fun and they're so easy because they are made to um, communicate a lot in a really little, bit um and so you know something as simple as this um logos are such a important symbol um you know boom you we know what that means right um and so symbols are huge okay so we already used one today um and that oh i did it backwards see i even looked to see if i was going to do that there we go that's why i said you have to practice okay so we have music symbols um we've got bass treble clef we've got um music note kind of stuff that's all awesome um we have the peace sign which is great um we have the yin and yang balance which is awesome and a super popular one something as simple as hearts or stars can be very symbolic um i paint so many stars on the fourth of july stars and stripes forever right okay so that's a big one um we can um use emojis are huge examples of symbols we can do um really fun um you know nature has some great symbols that we can use there's a sun there's a moon there's a really fun um design that's like something like this that everybody always has to have in henna that's like a wave and a sun mixed together. Um, letters can be used as symbols. Um, acronyms are super huge. Um, and so, you know, even a hashtag is a symbol that we can use um, for whatever things we want to be able to communicate. So anyway, I don't have to go through every single symbol, but I want to show you how powerful the symbol can be in just creating something fun and fancy and free and wonderful. I think this is a little boy and I'm going to totally make it a more feminine design, but that's fine. Okay. So what we can do here um, is just capture a feeling. Um, and that's wonderful and you'll recognize it as you know something pretty or whatever but so i want to kind of do a band a little bit and it's going to be um of greenery so we're going to have uh greens coming up and then greens coming down um and then we can add in leaves to add some variety to those little spiky lines i just did Um, and then we can have maybe one leaf, but usually leaves are above and stems are below um, when we get that. Okay, so we have that, which is so pretty. And then we want some pretty color. Um, and so I'm gonna just grab, let's do some purple and blue. And this is where we're taking a look at the feeling of flowers instead of specific ones. I couldn't tell you, um, oh, this is in the geranium family. Like, no, that's not really what we're going for here. We just wanna have, so I'm starting up at the top and working my way down to be able to create these little bunches. And it lets me go over the front again to create that depth. Okay, so nature comes in three in odd numbers, so that's awesome. Um, and then I'm going to um, I don't want the same color, but I want a color that's in that same color family. So we're using cooler colors. So let's go ahead 
and just grab that teal again that we were using earlier. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just put it right here. And this can be the size of this is going to very much affect um, how prominent in the design it is. So if this is what they ask for, you'll want to make it bigger than if it's just something that you're adding because you want to add a message. So we've just got some extra little. These are beads. Um, you can add them after if you want, because then you know where they're going. Um, but I like to kind of add them in before. Um, okay, so now we're just going to grab some white. I want this design to feel very calm. Um, and so I don't want to create a whole lot here. So I'm just going to do white lines um, there that is tying this bunch together. Um, we've got a little bead there that somebody had on their string um, and then we're going to just bring a very wispy little string down go through our beads um, you can see we've got a little bead there um, and then i'll just end it instead of having it wisp off um, and then we can add a little bit of highlighting to those beads add a little highlighting here maybe a little more there okay and then here and then um, we'll bring this one around back behind and through. Um, and actually we got to come up and grab that one. <laughs> um, anyway, and then maybe we'll have it wisp out that one and through. Okay. Now we've got so much fun. I, I could do lines forever. I absolutely love them. Um, but uh, let's grab a little bit more of a floral um, accent here by mixing in just these little um, white bud kind of little flowers here. And then if you wipe off the white, now I have a flattened brush. All I did was I just wiped it on my thing. I've got a flat brush and it still has a little bit of paint. And that can be a great way to be able to go in and add detail and highlight that you want to have be just very faint and soft. Um, and so I can do that to um, just add texture even to those little flowers that were in there before. Okay, so now um, this is almost done. Like I'm, I'm loving how this is looking, uh, but I want to show you how we can add that message with this little symbol. And so we could um, use any of the symbols we talked about. Um, you could put a little, you know, recycle symbol um, on there and it's going to completely change um, whatever this is. If there's a farm, you know, farm to table uh, company and you add a little logo, that would be beautiful. But I'm just going to trace around here in this bead. And we can add some of that tracing if we want. But again, I'm loving how simple this picture is. So I don't want to add a whole lot of detail work. Um, I was planning to do peace, but I really like the idea of making this more of the yin and yang. So here is a huge trick when you're doing yin and yangs. You want to make a giant circle. And I say that because once you fill all around, I swear it shrinks by like half. I don't know how it works, but you end up with only the inner part of the circle you drew, not the whole thing. And so, um, just yeah whenever you're drawing that circle make it enormous because you can always shrink it but you can't make it bigger but um you can see that that uh little bit there of a symbol created a message um a message of balance to this little um sprig of beautiful flowers that came out of earth and you know it's letting this person focus on something that's important to them and the color choice was a little harsh. And so I'm just adding some of that harsher tone up into the flowers. And now the design um, fits and works and is beautiful. So anyway, this is such an important way to add a message to our work um, is just by being able to use symbols. Um, they pull so much more weight with them than words alone can. So 
Awesome. There's that one. And you guys are being so hardcore hanging in here. It's amazing to be able to share all of this with you and to be able to give you guys a chance to give your designs a voice. Okay, so we've gone over banner, flag, speech bubbles, accessories, and symbols. The next one I want to hit on is when we are doing letters. Um, and so lettering is something that, you know, it touches a lot. If we're doing it on flags, if we're doing it on um, banners, or if we're just doing it by itself, which is what this is, letters are really intimidating. And so this might be something that you've never done before. It might be something that's old hat to you. So I am sure at some point we will do two hours on lettering by itself. But I just want to give you a really basic, um, fast um, idea of what it is to look at. So a huge transition for me was when I moved from thinking of writing letters to drawing letters. I'm not really good at writing letters. My handwriting is not amazing, but I can draw. And so let's learn how to draw letters. What we need to focus on is we need to have a round shape that we are happy with and a straight shape that we're happy with. And then we need them all to match. So this round shape might be round like that. It might be round like this. That straight shape might be up and down. It might be slanted. It might be bowed. Like it really doesn't matter, but we need round and we need straight and then we need cupped. And what the cupped part is, is it's just part, part of the round. So it might be this half of the round. It might be that half of the round. It might be that half of the round, but whatever, but we want it to match. So if we do this kind of cup or if we do that kind of cup, it kind of matches this round where this one, this is going to be more that kind of cup and this is going to be more that kind of cup. We just want to match whatever we did over here. Okay, so we take those two bits and we put it into the alphabet, and you can see that, um, take this one here, we have our A, well, this is our round shape, and then that is our straight shape, and we did it, yay! Okay, so the next one, we have our straight shape for B, and then we have our round shape, and we have a B. Now see, we need a cup shape, but all we're gonna do is erase the part of the circle that we don't need. So there we have our C. And we can go through and we can make this. Now, hooray, I throw ABC. I know that that might not seem like a big deal, but I'm gonna show you as we letter something together here in a second, how, what a big deal that is. And then we have a major advantage. When people look into hand lettering and they start using a brush pen for the first time, I'm using a brush pen right now, by the way, um, it's intimidating, but we were raised on paintbrushes, like face painters are painters. And so we understand the way a brush works, the thin to thick to thin. And so you'll often see um, this kind of practice for letterers, where you go up thin and down thick and up thin and down thick and up thin and down thick. And by taking that method, we can do cheat shading, which is where um, we have ABC. And we think, okay, where did we go down? All right, so we're coming on this A, and we were going down right there, and we just add a second line. And then we went up, and then we went down here. And then on the B, we went down, and then we went up, and then we went down. And then on the C, we go up, then we go down, then we go up again. Okay, so then wherever we went down, we added the down line, we then just fill it in. And this is called um, faux calligraphy. Um, when you do this and you add the little lines where everything connects like that. Um, but you can see how cool that is by adding line weight. Well, we as face painters, we have said and heard thin to thick to thin so many times. And so if we just add these little bits of information together, it really helps as we add messages through lettering. So I'm going to go ahead and do a lettered piece really quick because this is something that should be old hat to all of us. Um, but it is one of the fastest and one of the most, um, pleasing. People just love this. So um, I'm going to grab a rainbow, but I'm going to make it um, just mostly the warm colors instead of the full-on rainbow. But you can do a rainbow if you want. Okay, so then we want to do thin to thick to thin. So here we come. We're going thin. We're going to add thick and we're gonna go thin. There we go. And then we can add a second one right here and a third one right here. 
and that looks cool already. Um, if you want to have a little bit more room, um, you can in the middle one reverse your stroke and right there and make it kind of thicker. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we need a way to kind of not get rid of these gaps but make them more interesting and so we've already done flowers so you can again use any shape you want um i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to use hearts so i love doing hearts with a filbert i feel like it is the world's best brush really but okay so we just do a teardrop shape which is just sliding down and sliding down so we just do, as I pull down, I'm rotating my fingers to give me that teardrop. So teardrop shape there, teardrop shape here, teardrop, teardrop. And then let's do a bigger one right here. And this just gives us the chance to have something besides that swipe. That swipe is what matters. That's what's important. That's what we're working on and going towards, but this just gives us a little bit of extra interest. Um, okay, so there we have that. And then um, I love that bright yellow color. And so I'm gonna come in and load just some yellow, maybe a little yellowy orange, um, and add that to the background to give us um, just a little bit more motion and movement into this design. So we come here, oh, look how pretty that is. Okay, we've got, and if you like more of a sense of control, you can totally go for that and get that. These like crazy all over the place lines can be kind of intimidating, but you can see I'm just looking for Vs. So anywhere there's a gap or a V, that is where I'm just going to fill it with a little bit of line work and so even though it just looks random it is so not random randomness does not <laughs> turn into beauty consistently it can but it also cannot sometimes so i'm just finding a v putting a couple little teardrops um, and then this space is kind of big and open so i'm going to just pull one teardrop that way uh, but you can see I'm just kind of making a mess. So we've got a good base to work on now. Okay, so let's do our letters. We're going to go right across this. And this is a beautiful place to put a name. And so um, I like to think, what are the letters and where is it going to go? What is the shape of my circle and the shape of my line? And then there is, when you look at this, um, another important part of lettering is there is a top, a middle, and a bottom, which if you look, we were kind of sneaky and we have a top, a middle, and a bottom. And so that can help us as we do our letters to get it to fit right in there. And so I'm going to write the name Anna because I like that name. It's pretty. Um, but so here we're going to start up here and we're going to have our thick because we're going down and then thin because we're coming up. And then it went from the top all the way to the bottom because this is a big one. And then we're going to go thick down and then thin because we're coming up. And then we're not going to go as high because this isn't a capital letter. But so we're going to go thick down, thin up, thick down. And then we want that little thin up again. And then we just repeat that same letter. So thick down, thin up, thick down, a little thin up. And then the last A, we wanna have it be small because again, it's not the capital. And we're gonna just do thin because we're going up, thick because we're coming down, thin because we're going up. And then we just add this bottom. And then it's the end, so we can have it just be done, but I love how everything comes from somewhere and goes somewhere. So let's have this one. I just pull a really big swirl to the end 
goes right through that heart. It's beautiful. And then the beginning, I wanted it to come somewhere. So I'm going to just have this little bit of where we started and add that same swirl. So we added swirl, swirl. It looks beautiful. And then we've got all of our pretty line work already with white. And I don't want to take away from this, but I want it to look like it belongs. So I'm going to add some dots around. Then we have some lined ones, and then we can add some of our sparkles. Uh, but you can see, like, this is just the beginning. You can have so much fun with lettering. Um, kids love having their names done. You can write pet names. Um, you can have just an absolute ball um, going in and then creating all of this. And every single one will be different. The lines, they, they just, oh, they can go on forever. And it's so awesome. And um, I know those bright colors are kind of hard to see through there. Um, the lettering, but I hope you can see that this is a wonderful way to add a voice to your design, to just go ahead and put in the one word. It might be a word that's important to them, it might be their name, it might, you know, whatever um, they're feeling, but this is a really awesome way um, to do more than just an image. So there you go, there's your basic lettering tutorial. I really hope um, if you haven't spent some time doing lettering that you give yourself a chance because lettering, it's just really fun. Okay, so we've got two left. You guys are doing fantastic. We've done banner, flag, speech bubble, accessories, symbols, lettering. Now this one is probably where my love of adding a voice started. Um, so we've saved some of the best for last, uh, which is great. Um, and this is signs. So if you think of driving, um, signs are crazy important. Road signs are essential. And so just like flags, they are simple, they are easy to read, um, there's not a lot of information, one word, two words, maybe some symbols, but they tell you a lot of really important things. And so, um, you know, you even have something as simple as, you know, that. And you're like, oh, it's a hospital, you know, like we know that. Um, and so I love being able to incorporate signs um, and making my own signs. Some of the other signs that are really fun to do um, is you can have like yard signs, right? Where um, somebody can hold this or you can plant it in and just throw some little grass. Um, and no fishing, gone swimming. Um, we have the chance to do some little wiggly texture to make this look like wood. Um, that can be super fun. Uh, how funny would it be, um, you know, to put a no trespassing sign on somebody's face and be like, what are you trying to say? You know, it's just, it's really fun to add the voice, to add the message that signs can bring in. So again, we're paying attention to shape, um, color, size, um, and in this design, we're going to have a little bit of fun with it. Um, okay, so, um, Let's, let's get right to it. Now remember, we can add as much detail or as little detail as we want to into our work. So we can totally go in there and try and make something incredible, or we can really hold back and let the message be what really comes across. Um, but this is going to be fun. Okay, so I am going to, we're going to do some elephants because I really like elephants and we don't get to do them often enough. So we're going to pull, an elephant is a circle, and then we pull the front to make the nose a little bigger, and then we go back and then we go up. And then we'll add the little front part because he's got to hold a sign. So there he goes, and then we flip it if we're one stroking and just make it a little bit thicker coming back up. Now, if you don't want to do the whole body, um, just throw in some greenery. Uh, elephants like to hang out in this um, African, you know, grassland savanna stuff. So don't at all feel like you have to get all of it in there. Um, but if you have the space and you want to do it, it's really not too bad. We just need to have, you know, a bean <laughs> shape, a jelly bean shape for the body. Um, and then we throw in a little tail that comes down. Elephants don't throw their tails up very often. And then it has a little hair poof. Um, and then just some stocky legs. And you can have the whole elephant, which is so cute. So 
whatever you feel comfortable with, wherever you're at. Um, if it's all you can do to do the elephant's face, don't ever feel bad for doing the art you want to do. That's just the choices that you get to make. Okay, so here's our little elephant. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to add a second little elephant. And I love how iconic an elephant shape is because it allows us to change the color. Some animals, their shapes are all kind of the same. And so it's really important that you get the color right. Um, but elephants aren't that way. And so we can do a smaller little head right here. And then we bring forward the nose and we curve down and we curve up. And we give him his little block. Um, okay, this is probably a her, so I should be saying her little nose, but whatever. Okay, and then of course we can accessorize these elephants. We can have so much fun, but I'm trying to focus on the sign more than the elephants, so. Okay. But we did succeed in getting one elephant that's a little bigger and one elephant that's a little smaller. All right. Now we can hold the, we can have a stick. I don't really want a stick though, because once the stick goes up, it's going to make the sign a lot smaller because it's going to use the sh available space. And so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to have him holding the corner of our sign. So we've got one sign that comes across like this. It's gonna tuck right behind that little elephant. Anytime you can have two parts of your illustration connect, it creates um, like a mental pleasure for the viewer. Like it's just like, oh, okay, that's one design, not two. It's really crazy, but it kind of works. So there's our sign there. And then we're gonna have this little guy holding the second sign that's gonna go right underneath. Okay. Oh, and then let's uh, go ahead and add some eyeballs. And rem notice that I'm adding them with plenty of room for a forehead. Animals have foreheads. We don't want the eyes up here or it's going to look wrong. And everybody can tell that it looks wrong, but they can't tell you why. But I can tell you why. <laughs> it's because those poor little animals need foreheads. Okay, now we have a pretty clearly defined base and it's connected up here but it's not connected here. And so if this was like a necklace or something, it might bow. And so I can go in and just add a sparse little green nothing <laughs> along to create that sense of space and time. Um, and that can be kind of nice for the viewer to be given that. Okay, so I'm gonna just go ahead real quick and outline our little elephants, and then we will um, do their sign. And I had blue on my brush already, so I've loaded black, but if it ends up looking a little funky or even awesome, then we will learn that. Okay, so here we come down here. On the trunk of an elephant, um, we can cut in a few little times as we bend around, and it just looks really great. And then um, we can kind of curl in right there and then bring that in and give it the nice little happy cheek. And we want this elephant to be paying attention to the signs or over to the other elephant. We don't want to make it looking off into space. Then we can just do the one ear. This ear is tucked behind. This ear is tucked in front. Give it some little there. And then these are juvenile elephants. It's kind of a brother and sister team. Um, so I'm not going to worry about tusks on them. Um, and then you can put in some little wrinkly knees if you want. That's very elephant. Uh, but you can see that that's really not too much work to get our cute little elephant there. Okay, so um, one thing, we do have a very big forehead on that elephant. And so I'm going to go ahead and just add an eyebrow. It's something that's going to make it a little bit more human. Um, and so it looks cuter, uh, but it also kind of helps not just feel like there's so much empty space. So here we're gonna come around like we did before. Once we get over to the nose area, we can start doing our flicks in to help that nose bend around and look elephanty. And we can come and do our little tucks in to hold the sign, curve back. You can see that I don't curve up. I want this mouth to come back. Um, and we can even do the other 
kind of curve. Um, since this is a boy, we might not want to make him look quite as cute. Um, and that can just be one of those ways. Um, it's really amazing to me the subtle differences and changes that can make such a big difference. Um, we can also do the eye that we did on the unicorn um, is really cute. Um, and it is a little bit more masculine. Um, there you go, little guy. Okay, so then we have this ear coming around and we have that ear and then give him his nice little knee and some little toenails. Okay, trying to go quick for us, but okay, so you can see we've got these two little elephants and they are both holding a sign. Um, if you want it to look cute and you don't want to do just solid outlines, you can always throw a little wiggle into your outline and it makes it fun, it makes it interesting. Remember, these designs are yours to do what you want with when you're the painter. And so don't feel stuck at all. Remember, your creativity can be applied anywhere and everywhere. Okay, so now let's add some fun. Um, so we're going to have this top one say welcome. And I did luck out a little bit in my placement um, that it looks like it was made to be on there. Um, that can be hard to do. So often what I'll do is I'll pick the middle letter, which would be Okay, so this letter counts as two because it's got two spaces. This is a one, this is a one, 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 two, one. I hope you can understand if that makes sense. But then what you're able to do um, is you're able to um, pick the middle, which is the C, and put it in the middle. And then you can kind of see, okay, I need to fit three, well, four here, and I need to fit four there, and kind of space it out that way. Um, and that can help um, if that's something that you struggle with. Okay, so then we can kind of see we've got a bunch of open space up here. Um, and so I really like to bring like that <laughs> and just have a fun line that's just fun. But um, if you don't want to do that, you sure don't have to. Okay, now I want it to be kind of like he wrote that sign and she made the sign. Um, and so I'm going to do... Um, okay, so because she's little, I was thinking to have this one be upside down, which would be super fun, but a lot of the letters are letters that we recognize. Um, they're the same upside down or backwards or whatever, and I, it's hard to write upside down. Um, but so that would be a fun way to do it, but I think what I'll do instead is I'll change the font, and we'll do it this way, um, and we'll do it this way, and then the E, we're going to do backwards. And that can kind of be a fun little thing that makes it look like she's a little kid. And I'm trying to mess up the writing a little bit more. There we go. So welcome home. Um, and it would just be so fun to, you know, if you're at a party and somebody's brother just got home from college or whatever, to throw in a little bit of, um, Place and time is really what messages are all about. They're about giving somebody the chance to um, not just, I got an elephant because I love elephants, but I got an elephant today because this is what's happening in my life today. Um, anyway, but there's so much fun. And then of course you can go in and add your highlighting and all the other bits to make your um, design something really magical. Um, and we can just have it be a really fun way to share a message. Um, this is something that I'll often do um, because a sign is a really easy shape. Um, and so we can take that sign and we can stick it right in front of the body of something. And so if we have a little teddy bear's head and then we have him holding a heart, 
And so all you need are these two little circles. And then you have this giant place where you can write whatever you want. Um, but a sign is a perfect way to avoid painting some of the things that we might struggle with painting. Um, and so there is a really fun little example of the use of signs um, and, and how awesome those can be. Okay, so last but not least, we've got about 15 minutes to do um, our eighth one. And then of course, we'll go into the question and answer session. Um, and so let's take a look. And this is one of my absolute favorites. Um, and this is hand gestures. Okay, so when we are using hands in illustration, it's it's intimidating. We've talked about it a couple of times today already, um, but uh, animals are often what we're drawing. So remember, they can be as simple as that. Um, a human hand, I've often, like a mermaid hand, I've often done it like this, you know, or you can do the mitt where you have a finger and then, you know, like the mittens kind of look. Um, it doesn't have to be something that's crazy intense, but let me just kind of show you a little bit. Um, a hand is kind of a box shape, and then we have a thumb that comes here, and then we have four digits that come here, and then we have the wrist. So that is kind of the, the shape or whatever that we're going for when we do um, hand drawing. And then of course, we make it awesome and we put fingernails and it gets all complicated. But for face painting, that's not really a thing. That's not where we need to go. That's not what we need to do. Um, and so one of the things that actually, if you watch Walt Disney um, animation, they'll often in cartoons um, across, not just Disney, but they'll take off a digit. And so instead of four fingers that you're trying to make room for, you come up here and you have the thumb, and then you have a little bit of space because you've got to have the palm of the hand. Um, or let's do it even this way. You have the thumb and then you have the palm of the hand right there so that you draw that. And then you come up from the palm and you make room for one, two, three fingers right there. And that hand is a lot easier to draw. It's a lot easier to make room for and whatever. So think for a second, like, unless you speak sign language and then you're overqualified, <laughs> but think for a second how much we do with our hands. I mean, we have the like play and hang loose kind of thing. We have like this weird little thing. We have um, uh, Spock's little hand gesture. We have, hey, thumbs up. We've got pointing. We've got thumbs down. We've got like all kinds of like sucking on a thumb. We've got the peace sign. We've got so much that we can say. So, Think how fun it is if we take and you bend a thumb, that's not hard, we can do that. And then we do a V, that's not hard, we can do that. And then anytime you're doing fingers that are bent, they're just little circles. And so you could do one or you can do two. So now we have all four. And then just remember to do this part of the hand. If we skip that part, that's when we turn into a little kid drawing this hand right like that and we can tell a little kid drew that it's because of that lack we need to make sure that we have that so you want to have a square and the thumb comes from the bottom of the square and the fingers all come from the top that's where this comes from here but we just get that little bit there and all of a sudden that looks right it looks simple it looks fast it looks easy but it looks right and so how sweet to have this thing flash in a peace sign and i'm going to show you how incredibly much fun it is to use that um, ability. Oh, and one other thing that I want to show you um, is this is a human hand. Just like we added eyebrows to the um, um, to the elephant. We added eyebrows to the elephant. You can totally do this on a bird. You've got his awesome wing shape here, you know, um, and you just add enough little feathers going up and now all of a sudden those fingers are feathers and now you have a bird that can flash the peace sign. So don't feel intimidated like, oh, I can't, no, you can. You can break rules wherever you want them. You just want to understand what they are so that you know what it is that you're breaking. Um, anyway, okay, so we are going to have fun. Um, okay.
fun with this. All right, so this is, I'm gonna dedicate this one to COVID and staying at home with kids. So we've got, I just wanna have like a place for this design to exist. So I'm just trying to draw some boxes. Um, I'm kind of one stroking it in so that I have a little bit of the work already done for me of trying to figure out how these are all working out, but don't feel intimidated by that part. You could just draw squares and that'd be fine, but okay. Now I love drawing little people. Um, I feel like it's something that isn't done very often in face painting because it's intimidating. And so it can be a really fun thing to do um, and to work on and to practice. Um, and yeah, I absolutely love it. So I'm going to have a little guy right here and um, we're just gonna, you know, this is a little boy. Um, so we don't need it to be super detailed because he has some extra baby fat still on him, so he doesn't need to be chiseled or anything. Um, but we give him a nice little neck and he'd have an ear right there or whatever. Um, and then we're going to give him his, and this is really how I do it. Like I use my little filbert brush and I go in here and okay, we have a finger that's gonna point up, then we're gonna have the thumb that comes and crosses in front, and then we're gonna have the rest of his little fingers right there. And then this is his arm that comes down and then it's gonna come all the way down to an elbow, and then that's kind of gonna disappear behind him. And then this arm can just come over here and move forward, and then we'll have it resting right here on this box. Okay, so you can see I'm kind of just developing this little fellow. Um, I'm gonna give him some nice brown hair, and I'm gonna let it grow. So I'm gonna have some hair that's gonna come and it's gonna grow down from the front right here. You can see I'm coming across and then bending down. And then we're gonna have some that grows back down along the back of his head right here. And then we'll come give him his little sideburn, let him have a little ear and then kind of come bring that in. So by doing this, it helps me have like a little place in time of just like, okay, how does this all work? Um, could I have just done a brown circle? Yeah, sure. But um, that just kind of helps me. And then I can kind of see, okay, this is a very flat um, profile. I don't want it to be quite that flat. So I'm going to give him his little cheek back that we took away a little bit. Um, we could even put a mask on him. That looks a little masky. But again, we'll, we'll get there. We'll figure it out. Okay, let's grab some blue and um, just kind of go around, give him a nice t-shirt sleeve right there. And then we just need to have that kind of tuck behind. And then we've got another t-shirt here, it's coming down and he's just kind of coming together. And then I don't really want to worry about the rest of him. Um, I know that that's kind of rude and lazy, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna put another box. So he's back behind all of these boxes. And now that I've got this brown, I can come in here and add you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever to these boxes. You could have some arrows in this side up and this whatever. And then um, I'm gonna grab some white and we're gonna use a couple things. So we've got our hand gesture in there that's giving him a voice, but then we also are gonna use a little symbol. Um, and so I'm gonna throw in that little space right there to make room for that. And um, facial expressions are ruled by the eyebrows and the mouth. So noses are gonna kind of do what they do and cheeks are gonna kind of do what they do and we can try and work those all out if we want to. But if we pay attention to the eyebrow shape and where the eyes are at, um, that's really going to help us. Um, so there's, hey, <laughs> looks kind of funny. I realize that, but we'll, we'll take care of him. Don't worry. Okay. And then we'll put some pink in. Let me get it a little bit wetter. So whenever I'm putting in my color, I really feel like I'm just sketching. And then it's when I outline that I need it to work. 
Um, and so don't feel bad if you're working on your outline or if you're working on your color and you're like, huh, that's not quite right. Um, don't shy away from that. Um, ask yourself, okay, what's wrong? And use that sense and see it not as a criticism, but as uh, wisdom, the ability to tell when something's wrong. Like, oh my gosh, you need that as an artist. That's not something that we want to run away from and tell ourselves these false stories of, I'm not good at this. The fact that you can tell that something's wrong means you are good. It means that you can figure it out. So anyway, that's a little bit of a soapbox for me. Uh, here we are on painting all these boxes. Should write soap on one of them. Okay, so now we get to go into this little fellow's details. And the facial features are the part that's going to be the most important. So I'm gonna work on that. Now I chose kind of a hard perspective. This is a three quarter perspective. And so I'll show you what's important um, or, or what, what is meaningful here. And then um, you can decide whether or not you wanna try it. But we want the nose to be what's kind of blocking um, that back eye. So we draw that in and here, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here for you guys so you can see it a little better. So you wanna make sure that you have the right load on your brush. If it's too wet, it's going to smear and you're gonna have to start over and I hate that. Um, if it's too dry, then it's going to, you're gonna have to splay your bristles to try and get it to lay down and that's really not very good either. Okay, so we're gonna do our teardrop down to cover the back of this and then we're gonna do that same teardrop right there and that gives us the top of his eye. And then we'll just scoop forward and give that little, nice little round circle right there. So we're gonna scoop forward and get that nice little round circle right there. And you can see that um, if I were to outline the bottom here, it would just end up being kind of a lot. So we're gonna just let that go. You can draw a little bit of an eye mark right there, like a little bit of the eyelid if you'd like. Um, but then we're gonna come here and we're gonna just grab his mouth is super open right there. And so we can just draw that like that. And then we're gonna come around and give him a nice little lip right there. And then come here. And then we wanna make sure that we give him a jaw. We don't wanna just scoop all the way around, but you can see that this guy's kind of happy. And then we can just bring a little mark right there for his ear. Okay, so we can see that he's happy about something, but the message isn't clear yet. So that is why we have these two extra things that we're adding. So we have his little thumb that's right there, and then finger three, two, three, and four. And I kind of like the pinky to go down a little bit. Um, and then we have the finger that comes up. And remember, we wanna have that square look. And there we go. So there's that little arm. Then we come around here. We kind of cut back there and out and down. Give him a little sleeve, little sleeve here. We've got an awesome place right here um, for a symbol. Um, you can, you know, go Nike or Adidas if you want to try and catch something that's popular. Um, you can match the clothes that the kid's wearing if you want to. Um, or you can even do something like an exclamation point. It's kind of fun. Um, okay, so then in order to get this to bend, we want the palm of the hand to be straight. It comes out and then it drops down. And we probably only have room for three fingers and that's fine because the thumb would just go over there or whatever. So we've got hands and that just adds so much. Okay, so then let's go ahead and do his hair a little bit. Um, he's got this nice shaggy hair because he's not going anywhere because he's stuck at home. And so um, he hasn't gotten a haircut for a while. We got that. Okay. And he looks so fun. Okay. So then here, we're just going to draw some horizontal lines, kind of connect them and give a little dot. And then we're going to add a V and wiggle it across and bing. Now, obviously that light bulb isn't really there in real life, um, but we're gonna grab that bright yellow that we were using earlier. I already had white loaded, and so it's gonna be more of a pastel bright yellow, but we can add a little bit to that filament and show that this guy just had an idea. 
He just figured out what he's going to do um, with all of these empty boxes that because they're not going shopping anymore, Amazon is bringing all of their stuff and he's kind of figured out, I mean, whatever it is, there's a story here and we're being able to um, tell that story a little bit by what we um, have added here. And so you can, you know, add funny words to the boxes if you want, um, but this can just be a really fun way um, to add that message is those, those fingers. Um, another, you know, that Uncle Sam pointing the finger forward, I want you, you know, there's so much that we can do um, with hand gestures. And it really lets our little designs have a voice because they can say yes to that or they can say no. <laughs> um, I love the stop, like, wait, stop. You know, you just put your hand up and it's like, oh, we got that message going. And it's just so much fun to be able to um, share that message and to be able to um, have that be something that we're saying. Uh, anyway, so you guys have been amazing. I hope that you learned something. I don't know that anybody ever talks about this stuff, but I love it so much, so I had to talk about it. Um, but anyway, okay, so what questions do you have? What are you thinking? Is that going to be fun to add to your painting? Oh, I got some nodding. Yes, that's awesome. And for those of you that entered the class partway in, um, I just wanted to let you know this class has been recorded and it will be going up on YouTube. It usually takes me a couple days because um, it takes my computer a little while to figure out how to handle the file size because it's pretty big. But um, so you will have the chance to watch parts you may have missed or if there's something you want to watch again, um, it will be available for that. So anyway, well, it was really helpful. That was a lot of information, but I love that they were designs that were not typical for face painting. They were more, and I'll put this in the comments, they're more painterly. So it made <laughs> me feel like I could draw on what I already know and not so much have to have a design that somebody else has already done and try to copy it and make it, you know what I mean? I, it felt really encouraging. Awesome. Oh, <laughs> I am so glad to hear that. I really, you know, the designs that are super popular and they're everywhere yeah. is because they work so well with Facebook. Yes. yes. But to me, um, the most special thing you can do for a kid is to give them an individualized design. Yeah. And so yeah. Give something that works really well, absolutely. I'm not saying yeah. you have to oh, no. design every time. No, and you cover a lot of those kinds of things in your other classes, but this one in particular was just, uh, it, it was just a no, another piece of the puzzle. So it was really nice. Yay! Oh, I'm so glad. Well, and I feel like because we've covered some of those, how do you one stroke and how yeah. do you work, then exactly. you can be open to, okay, what else can you do? You yeah, know? And yeah. This is something um, I've tried to sell a couple different people on, oh, we should teach this class. And people are like, um, no. And, and so <laughs> today I was like, I'm gonna teach people how to use the hand gestures, because I really- That's I, awesome, no I, one I does that. love it. Whenever yeah. you get your little animal that we all know and we love, like the peacock, we love her. Put the peacock yeah. up there. But then all of a sudden have her saluting because it's yeah. Mother's Day. And yeah. so we need to have a saluting peacock. I mean, hello. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. It makes everything, and you can individualize it so much with your own painterly personality, which is really fun. Yes, and, and that's very true. And that's one thing that I feel like gets lost a lot, especially for new yeah. face painters. Yeah. It's just the idea that you are the artist. Like, yeah, that little kid is telling you what to do, but you get to do whatever you want. Yeah. And that is the difference between, you know, a person who face paints and a face painter. A yeah. face painter is somebody that's owned the identity of, I'm in charge here. I'm the artist. I'm going to do what I want to do. <laughs> like I'm going to listen. And my job is to make you happy. So it's not like all of a sudden I'm just going to paint everybody to be Batman. No, probably not. Um, but there have been certain days or whatever where you're like, okay, today I'm going to sneak a feather into every single design. 
and people are, you know, half the people aren't even going to notice, but that's just what I want today. And yeah. that makes it fun. And I really feel like if you can maintain interest and happiness for you as the artist, yeah. it doesn't matter what you're painting, it's going to look better. Yes. Um, and so these are just some of those things that for me, my designs needed to start talking. Yeah. And so I've slowly over the course of years been like, oh, I could do it this way. I could do it that way. And so I was very excited to share all of that with you, as you can tell. So. <laughs> yeah. I, what I love a lot, Laura, is that, you know, this kind of thing, this illustration stuff, um, it is the, the way I perceive your art. Is, it's kind of like your trademark. And I think that it is something that sets you apart from other face pages and other tutorials that I have watched. So it's great. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, because I've, I had seen your eyes class. Uh -huh. So this is kind of part two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, because you, you, like in your eyes class, you talk so much about expression and mood and, you know, the storytelling through the eyes, because they do tell, like in real life, eyes do tell stories. And, yeah. um, and so this is expanding the vocabulary of storytelling. And I mean, I don't know how everyone else feels um, in the group. I would very happily do a part three of this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you know, and there, there is a lot of face painting education out there. Yes. Um, there's a lot of opportunities to learn in face painting and that's wonderful. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. There's so mm -hmm. much more available now than there was even 10 oh, years ago. Best time to be alive. Um, and so it's nice to feel like I can offer what might not be already there. Um, so that, you know, you guys have a reason, um, that this is useful instead of just like, okay, let's do butterflies again, yeah. you know, in a different <laughs> color. Right? I thought that there's too much. I mean, I love butterflies. Don't get yeah, me wrong. Yeah. You guys have watched me paint them more than once. I know. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that there's a lot out there and I think that every artist, and this is a challenge a little bit to you. But every artist needs to spend time asking themselves, what is in this art for me? What mm -hmm. is it that I'm trying to express? And um, I know that when you first start, you're just trying to survive. <laughs> and that is an <laughs> awesome place to be. I, if that's where you're at, oh my gosh, keep surviving. Um, but as we, I like to think of it, you know, as you advance, as you level up and you're like, okay, I've got this. What can I do now? What mm -hmm. can I add now? And um, just adding more products uh it's well and this is for me you might feel differently but you run into a point where okay i now have glitter gel and i have glitter cream and i have you know every color and every brand and every you know and it's it's easy to grow a kit um and it's easy to grow designs you know like okay i can do this design and this design and this design but being able to go deeper and being able to grow processes and techniques um, can really help give you the confidence to where, I, I don't know, I just think it's more fun. It, well, and, and there will be a time, comes sooner or later, it happens in every field, you won't have that product that you planned on, something will go wrong that you didn't expect, and having the ability to think through what it is and why you're painting it, you can quickly then shift and go, okay, I don't have that product, but I can fill in the gap and change it this way and it'll be okay. I'll make it just as fun. And that makes it, you know, that makes it easier to be a professional. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Oh, it's so true. And, and really, I mean, COVID is a perfect example of yeah. that change, yeah. you know, um, just watching what other people are, finding to paint on because the little faces are few and far between right now. Yeah. I know I have the hardest time and I've decided to just be the crazy lady um, at the grocery store. I see a little kid and it's like, hi, how are you? Doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I am missing that, you know, 150 kids a day summer pace. It's like, I, yeah. you know, anyway. <laughs> so I'm like, I've, I've just owned it. It's like, okay. They're going to be like, I don't know what was up with her. And it's like, that's okay. You don't need to know. I'm not doing anything scary. I'm just saying hello. But anyway, so um, yeah, I hope that this is useful. Um, as you go forward um, this week and any week, really, um, I am available if you're working on a design and you're stuck and you just want a second pair of eyes. Give me pictures. What's that? <laughs> You froze funny. there for a second. <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, like 
I said, <laughs> no, my internet is mad and we probably better finish up here. But um, I just wanted to say I am available. Um, if you ever need to send me a picture or say, hey, what, what would you change about this? I'm happy to give you thoughts. Um, just make sure. And of course, if you do it in Learning with Laura, then we all get to see, which is even better. Um, but just know it's better for me if you tell me what it is you are wanting to know. Uh, you know, if you just want me to see, I love looking. Um, but if you're like, I want this to look more intense, I can give you thoughts better than if it's just like, what do you think? It's like, well, good job. <laughs> so anyway, there's that too. Oh gosh. Thank you. Absolutely. You're welcome. And welcome everybody that decided to try the class. Um, hopefully yeah. I'll get to paint with more of you later. And if you're not a part of the Learning with Laura group, it's just on Facebook and it's free and it's just really fun to be able to see what each other's painting. So anyway, everybody have a great day. Thanks for coming. You too. Thank you, Laura. Bye everyone. Yeah. Bye. Bye.